Okay, Charizard, I choose you! Since the dawn of time, fire has been a cornerstone of our existence. From keeping us nice and toasty, to helping us create structures, to cooking, to turning seemingly impervious things into smoldering ash, fire has so many purposes, and that's true in the world of Pokemon. And some of these fire types gladly lend their warmth to help others, while others just want to watch the Pokemon world burn. So let's see where all these fire type Pokemon fall on the morality spectrum. I'm Kyle with Pokebench, and this is fire type Pokemon good to evil. Before we get started though, just a couple of ground rules. We'll be judging these Pokemon by the characteristics of the species as a whole, meaning we won't be looking at any individual instances of the Pokemon in question. Exceptions can be made for some legendary Pokemon, but this will mostly be on a case-by-case -case basis. Also, if an entire Pokemon evolutionary line shares the fire typing, they'll be sharing one spot. As usual, we'll be starting with the most noble fire type Pokemon and working our way down to the most evil. These fire types might spit out white hot flames, but it's their warm hearts that make us feel so cozy and warm. Fluttering out of a volcano to get the gold medal of good, we have the sun Pokemon, the Volcarona line. During ancient times in the Pokemon universe, both Larvesta and Volcarona have been regarded as embodiments of the sun, with multiple people worshipping them, and with quite a few Pokedex entries mentioning that Volcarona uses the heat that emits from their bodies to save both people and Pokemon during a harsh winter, we can see how Larvesta and Volcarona became so popular. There is the small fact that if these Pokemon aren't careful, they can cause unintentional fires, but there isn't any malicious intent, and given the fact that they save lives in these cold, harsh climates, the Volcarona line definitely deserves the gold medal of good. We're going deep into the caves of Galar and Paldea to find our silver medal of good winner, the coal Pokemon, the Colossal line. Like with the Volcarona line, in whatever region Roly Coli, Carcoal, and Colossal find themselves in, they are highly popular Pokemon, due to them perpetually burning coal to help them move about. These Pokemon give off some pretty significant heat, and luckily for the people of Galar and Paldea, Carcoal and Colossal are also essentially giant mobile furnaces. Where Colossal is concerned, they are relatively calm Pokemon who don't mind helping out others when they achieve their Gigantamax form. Their shield Pokedex entries mentions them saving several lives thanks to helping others keep warm during a harsh cold wave. Though the reason we're not giving the Colossal line the gold medal of good is if anyone vandalizes their cave, they will be burned into a crunchy crisp. And sure, that is quite the overreaction. Colossal only does this to those who are harming their home, and apparently at no other time. Our first fiery legendary is up next, as we're giving the bronze medal of good to the steam Pokemon, Volcanion. Unlike our previous two entries, where Volcanion is concerned when it comes to their Pokedex entries, we really don't have too much to go off of, as Volcanion has only appeared in two games thus far, with both Pokedex entries just going over the legendary's habitat and attack power. So we are turning our attention to the movie Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel. In the film, Volcanion is a very protective Pokemon who looks after the other other Pokemon who live on the Nebel Plateau, specifically Majerna. Unfortunately for those Pokemon who do not live under Volcanion's protection, as well as people, Volcanion is a pretty aggressive Pokemon and doesn't hesitate in attacking them. But as all the Pokemon who reside on the Nebel Plateau have been harmed by people in the past, and Volcanion just wants to prevent any further pain. After the heroes in the movie are able to convince it not only to trust them, but to work alongside them, Volcanion becomes a very powerful ally, going as far as to sacrifice its in order to save the others. While Volcanion is undoubtedly a great Pokemon at heart, we're only giving it the bronze medal of good due to its harsh behavior towards others. Onto the first regional form, specifically from the Hisui region. Our fourth place spot goes to the Ghost Flame Pokemon, the Hisui and Typhlosion line. When compared to their Johto counterparts, the Typhlosion of Hisui are very calm, having a perpetually sleepy expression and seem to get along with most other Pokemon, as well as people, with them having a pacifistic personality. In addition to their calm attitude, Hisui and Typhlosion are said to have the ability to see the souls trapped on Earth and eat them. But this isn't done to satisfy a morbid appetite though. Instead, Hisui and Typhlosion then uses the flames that encircles their neck to purify the souls before releasing them once again and helping to guide them to the 
afterlife. When it comes to Cyndaquil and Quilava, they don't really adopt a new change in personality due to their new environment, with Cyndaquil still being relatively timid and Quilava being a bit aggressive. Probably the most colorful entry on the list, flying in from the Johto region, we have our next legendary, the rainbow Pokemon, Ho-Oh. Up until now, all of the other Fire-type Pokemon in our ranking have helped others out directly in one form or another. But with Ho-Oh, this really isn't the case. But even though it might not lend a hand when it comes to helping others out, a number of their Pokedex entries mentions that anyone who happens to see Ho-Oh will be blessed with eternal happiness. And while that is a nice concept, it also kind of leaves the door open to those who might not have the best of intentions. But as seen in the movie, I Choose You, it is pretty clear that Ho-Oh really prefers those who have good hearts and motives. We do wish this legendary was a bit more helpful to others, but it does seem to care about those who have good hearts and does give the gift of eternal happiness, which is obviously a lot from Johto to Unova. Next, we have the victory Pokemon, Victini. Like with a few of the other fire Pokemon we've ranked so far, Victini has only appeared in a handful of games, with their Pokedex entries giving us little information when it comes to ranking the victory Pokemon. But from their few Pokedex listings, it does mention that Victini will share their energy with others and will always ensure victory for their trainers. But it's really the movie duo of Black, Victini and Reshiram, and White, Victini and Zekrom, that lands the this legendary so high in this ranking. Before the events of the movies, Victini not only helped the King of Vale in moving the Sword of the Kingdom, but also lends their power to numerous psychic Pokemon to help out as well. When the heroes of the movie encounter Victini, this Pokemon does act pretty shy. But like in the past, the Victory Pokemon is willing to lend a boost to others while in battle. Victini does help out the main villain for the movies, albeit unwillingly, and is still trying to help others out once it's able to get free once again. If you love karaoke at your local bar, we feel like our next Pokemon line would really fit in. From the Paldea region, we have the Singer Pokemon, the Skeledurge line. Don't let the powerful set of jaws on Fuecoco, Crocolore, and Skeledurge spook you. Rather than chomping down on others, the Pokemon in this line love to belt out their favorite tunes. With Skeledurge, not only do they enjoy singing, but their voice has the power to soothe anyone that hears it. it. has a pretty good relationship with the tiny fiery bird that hatched from the egg that was previously on top of Crocolore's head. And where Crocolore and Fuecoco are concerned, they really don't have as much going for them as Skeledurge does, as neither of their Pokedex entries mentions them being able to calm others down. But as this evolutionary line was just introduced in Scarlet and Violet, it is understandable that their information is somewhat limited. We're going ape for our next Pokemon duo, the Ember Pokemon, the Simiseer line. Probably one of the more intelligent fire types in this section, Panseer and Simiseer are often found working alongside their trainers in everyday activities. Simiseer in particular seems to get the most enjoyment out of this as their Pokedex entries mention that they enjoy helping out others. After they evolve into Simiseer thanks to a Firestone though, they really don't have anything in their Pokedex pages that states that they enjoy helping others out as much. Instead, mostly focusing on Simiseer's attacking method of scattering embers at their opponents and their love of sweets. But even though their evolutionary line has only appeared in a handful of games and has been missing for a while in recent years, they definitely deserve a spot here in the good section. Our first fighting slash fire starter line is coming up next. Also from the Unova region, we have the Mega Fire Pig Pokemon, the Embor line. With Tapig and Pig Knight, a majority of their Pokedex entries just mention their eating habits and what happens if they lose control of their emotions. Tapig does have a sad but adorable fact that while they love berries, if they get too excited about eating one, they will burn it to a crisp. And while loving a good meal is always great, it is Embor that lands this evolutionary line in this section. Thanks to their pretty imposing size, Embor will fight to protect their friends, as their Pokedex entries mentions that they care deeply about them. But that also kind of counts against Embor a bit. Sure, caring deeply about one's friends is awesome and a quality everyone should have, but it doesn't mention what Embor does when it comes to the Pokemon that the Mega Fire Pig doesn't care about, which is why we're placing this evolutionary line here. Next, we have unquestionably the fastest fire evolutionary line next, the Fire Horse Pokemon, the Rapidash line. With their fiery Mains, quick movements, and incredible stamina, Ponyta and Rapidash have long been popular Pokemon in their areas. Ponyta might not be as fast as Rapidash, but as their leg muscles develop, they can easily clear something as large as Ayer's Rock with a single jump. And if Ponyta does find someone they connect well with, they not only allow someone to ride on them, but are able to make it so their fire doesn't burn. 
Rapidash might be a bit more competitive when it comes to their running habits, but they also keep Ponyta's willingness to help others out after they gain Rapidash's trust. And if having a bit of a competitive nature is the worst thing that can be said about Rapidash, they more than deserve their good ranking. Fetching our next spot, we have both the Kanto and Hisuian forms for the legendary Pokemon, the Arcanine line. The reason for us grouping both the regional variants of Growlithe and Arcanine together with their Kanto counterparts Really, the main difference is the amount of floof that Hisuian Growlithe and Arcanine possess. Regardless if it is the Kanto region or the Hisui region, both Growlithe and Arcanine are a duo of highly popular Pokemon, held in very high regard for anyone who encounters them. Growlithe, in particular, are very loyal Pokemon, willing to protect anyone they're close to, but they also get along pretty well with most other Pokemon. Once either form of Growlithe is exposed to a Firestone, however, both Arcanines captivate everyone who sees them with their incredible quickness and strength, with Hisuian Arcanines being compared to dancers due to their movements. True, with Arcanine, they don't seem to make any Pokedex pages mentioning their loyalty, but for both their high regard in the Pokemon universe, plus with Growlithe's caring and protective attitude, these dogs are definitely good boys. If you see flames flickering along the beaches of Alola, there is a pretty good chance that they belong to the Bone Keeper Pokemon, Alolan Marowak. Out of all the flames that fire types can produce, Alolan Marowak's does seem to have some of the darker implications about them, as if one is burned by them, it's said that they'll cause both mental and physical pain that will never end, and no amount of water will ever extinguish the fire. And that is pretty horrific. The Marowak of the Alola region mainly do this for a defense technique. The reason for Alolan Marowak's dancing is an act of them both mourning their fallen allies, and a way to show their fellow Marowaks a form of camaraderie. Given the fact that this regional form deeply cares about their fellow Pokemon, enough to dedicate an entire dance ceremony, shows that they're a pretty tight-knit group. You may not find our next evolutionary line on Pride Rock, but we still feel like the royal Pokemon, the Pyroar line, would get along well with Simba and the other lions. Litleo might seem like a cute and cuddly lion cub Pokemon, but really, these Pokemon can be a bit prideful and don't back down from a fight. However, when it comes to their behavior within their own groups, Litleo is under the tutelage of much stronger Pyroar, who helped the Litleo learn how to hunt in addition to protecting them. And that actually lands the Pyroar line some pretty hefty good points. Sure, hunting down and killing other Pokemon is far from great, but keep in mind Litleo and Pyroar are carnivores and everyone has to eat. Our next legendary Pokemon might have a slight antagonistic role in a movie, but it's clear that the volcano Pokemon, Entei, has an incredibly warm heart. For a majority of Entei's Pokedex entries, it just mentions that this legendary is incredibly fast, and whenever Entei lets out a roar, a volcano erupts. But like we said, when it comes to the movie Spell of the Unknown, Entei gives us a lot more insight into this Pokemon's character. During the course of the movie, it serves as a surrogate father figure for Molly after her father disappears and does whatever he can to protect her. And while this is incredibly sweet, Entei also does kidnap Ash's mom due to Molly's desire for a mother of her own, and battles against Ash and his friends when they go to rescue his mom. That said, after Molly realizes the harm that her actions were causing, Entei also becomes an ally to Ash Ash and his Pokemon, battling alongside them against the unknown and helping to return everyone to their own dimension. Sure, we acknowledge that some of the Volcano Pokemon's actions were less than ideal, but he was trying to give someone a loving family and does reform and help out in the end. Moving on to the Fire Warrior Pokemon, the Armorogue line. Evolution has been a mechanic of the Pokemon universe since the very beginning, but while a majority of these follow the evolutionary path in a straight line, Charcadet is one of the few Pokemon with a branching evolution. If a Charcadet Cadet is lucky enough to find an auspicious armor. They become the fireball launching Armor Oak. In addition to getting some pretty fancy battle gear, Armor Oak grows to be very loyal to those close to them, which makes them highly popular in the Paldea region. But as the Armor Oak line was introduced in Scarlet and Violet, there also isn't a ton of information about them, but we will give them a break due to their loyalty and helpfulness to others. Telling the truth is a quality everyone should have, but telling or seeking for anything other than the truth in the presence of our next legendary would be a bad idea. The vast white Pokemon, Reshiram. Similar to Zekrom, Reshiram wants to bring about a utopian world, as this legendary wants a world of truth and is willing to help others out. And as awesome as that is, Reshiram does tend to go a little overboard with 
with their actions when it comes to building a world of truth, as their shield Pokedex entry mentions that Reshiram will burn down kingdoms if those who live there ignore the truth or are consumed by greed. And while being greedy or ignoring the truth are not exactly great traits to have, we feel that this is a bit overkill. Plus, in the movie, White Victini and Zekrom, Reshiram does work with the main villain of the movie in order to restore the Kingdom of Vale. But when you consider other villains' actions, this isn't all too bad. Also, in the movie Black Victini and Reshiram, this legendary does help out the heroes when it comes to saving Victini and helping Zekrom out in relocating the Sword of Ale, and helping calm down the corrupted Dragon Force. Reshiram just wants an ideal world overall, and this legendary's good qualities do outweigh the bad, so we are keeping them in the good section. Casting a spell to get our next spot, we have our second Fox Pokemon line in this section, the Delphox line. The three Pokemon in this line are able to produce fire by themselves, and are also constantly carrying around twigs to help them with their powers. Well, Finnekin pretty much uses the twig as a tasty snack now and then to help boost their powers. Breaks and Adelphox actually use it as a makeshift wand of sorts, channeling their energy through that to create stronger attacks. Outside of battle, Breaks and Will light their twig on fire and use it as a way to communicate with their allies and help them out. Delphox, on the other hand, is able to see the future if they gaze into the fire, which helps them achieve a heightened mindset. It doesn't seem like the Delphox line really has any interactions outside their evolutionary line though, but for them looking out for each other, we'll keep them in the good section. Next up we have the Magmortar line. Magby, even though they are very young Pokemon, still are pretty capable of producing some pretty intense heat, as their body temperatures often come to over a thousand degrees, and if this Pokemon isn't careful, small embers can escape their mouths and start unintentional fires. Magmar, thankfully, has seemingly learned to control their fire much better, even though their internal temperatures are more than double of Magby's. A kind of cute but silly fact about Magmar Magmar and Magby is that both of these Pokemon will relax in pools of lava in order to heal wounds and to just unwind, like it's some sort of extremely warm bath. Once Magmar evolves into Magmortar though, not only do they gain the ability to launch fireballs from their arms, but they have a bit of good going for them. Even though Magmortar does prefer to just interact with their own evolutionary line, they will help out factories and metalsmiths to make their products. Smashing into our next spot we have the Darmanitan line, as Darumaka, the first Pokemon in this line, is known as the Zen Charm Pokemon. They're pretty popular in whatever region they live in, especially in the colder areas. And while Darumaka does help others out, such as providing good luck, we really do question some of their trainer's methods, such as keeping this Pokemon's poop in their clothing in order to stay warm. After they evolve into Darumanitan, they do become a bit more reckless, as a few of their Pokedex entries mention that they can be hot-blooded and can easily destroy trucks with a single punch. Thankfully, Darmanitan is not always in this mood, as they'll calm down and go into their zen form when they begin to meditate. If you were to challenge the heal Pokemon, the Incineroar line, for a championship, we wish you the best of luck, as their Pokedex title is taken from the pro wrestling term heal, which is typically the villain. We wouldn't be surprised if you expected this Alolan line to be lower in our ranking. Where Litten and Toracat, the first two Pokemon in this family, are concerned, most of their Pokedex entries describe them as behaving like average cats, albeit with some fiery tendencies. Litten in particular can be pretty aloof, but thanks to them being a fire type, they they can cough up burning hairballs. But once Toracat evolves into Incineroar, they gain a lot more muscle mass as well as arrogance. And while Incineroar does love pummeling other Pokemon into the dirt, and will even ignore their own trainer's instructions during a Pokemon battle, Incineroar also has a bit of kindness to their name, with its Shield Pokedex page stating that while this Pokemon is aggressive and proud, they'll still help out the Pokemon weaker than them. Finally, soaring high into our next spot, we have our legendary flame Pokemon rounding out our good section, Moltres. When springtime comes around each year, it is a common belief in the Pokemon universe that the seasonal change is brought about by Moltres, appearing to whatever region they live in. But much like the other two legendary birds, Zapdos and Articuno, Moltres does cause some pretty heavy damage in the movie The Power of One, nearly destroying the world due to their fighting with each other. But as the main villain of the movie is the one who is agitating Moltres, in addition to the other two legendary birds to the point of their extremes, we can't really blame Moltres all too much. Especially since after the villain is defeated, Moltres resumes its usual calm behavior. Plus, when it comes to Moltres' shield Pokedex entry, it is said that this legendary will appear to those lost on the mountains and use their fire to help light the trail in order to get them back to safety. And with that said, we now get to our neutral territory. These fire-type Pokemon fall in the gray area, 
Kicking things off, we have the Fox Pokemon, the Ninetales line. In the Pokemon universe, Vulpix and Ninetales are some of the oldest Pokemon out there, with some records mentioning them being able to live up to a thousand years. The main fact we know about Vulpix is that this evolutionary line doesn't have their luxurious tails right after they're born. Instead, they're single tail growing and splitting into the many others that these Pokemon are known for as they grow older. After Vulpix finds a Firestone and evolves into Ninetales, they gain both noble and less than ideal behaviors. It's a common belief that Ninetales is a reincarnation of Nine Saints and is held in very high regard, with many acknowledging this Pokemon's exceptional intelligence and calm demeanor. But remember what we said about Ninetales being able to live up to a thousand years? Well, that isn't the only thing that Ninetales can achieve for up to a millennium, because if someone pulls out any of their tails, the Fox Pokemon will place a thousand year curse on them. Though in their defense, it is just Ninetales retaliating against someone who hurt them. Moving on to the Striker Pokemon, the Cinderace line. Out of all the fire starters in the series, it's a safe bet to say that Scorbunny, Raboot, and Cinderace are amongst the most enthusiastic. But while Scorbunny is more often than not just happy to run around wherever they are and have an endless amount of energy, Raboot and Cinderace develop a more serious personality. Both of them look for small pebbles to juggle with their feet, using the flames they produce in order to produce a fireball, which they can build until it resembles a fiery soccer ball before launching it at their opponents. Outside of battle though, Cinderace in particular can be guilty of showboating from time to time, but otherwise this evolutionary trio seem to be fairly decent Pokemon. Don't let our next evolutionary line's somewhat spooky appearance fool you, because the dark Pokemon, the Houndoom line, isn't all that bad. Houndor and Houndoom are a pretty tight-knit group of Pokemon, but unlike the Pyroar line, who will protect each other from other Pokemon, it just seems like Houndour and Houndoom really only work together when it comes to hunting. But when it comes to that, it is said that this evolutionary line's teamwork is unparalleled, using a series of barks to communicate with each other to help them out in their pursuit of food. Unfortunately, if Houndoom does decide to let loose a blast of fire, the pain will never fade. Partly due to the toxins that are mixed into the flames. But like we said, even though Houndour and Houndoom lack some more positive aspects of other evolutionary groups, they aren't too bad as both Pokemon will be extremely loyal if partnered with a trainer they deem worthy. We finally arrive at our first gen starter line and one of the most popular Pokemon in the series, the Charizard line. Even though this starter line is one of the more popular out there, both Charmeleon and Charizard could definitely use an anger management course. But with Charmander, they have one of the sad facts of really any fire type Pokemon. They're pretty happy-go-lucky and seemingly get along well with almost anyone they encounter. However, if the flame on the tip of their tail gets wet or is extinguished, Charmander will straight up die. Not the typical going to a Pokemon Center after your Pokemon faints kind of scenario. If the flame goes out, that's it for Charmander. Thankfully for Charmeleon and Charizard, they really don't seem to have that potentially deadly problem. But many of their Pokedex entries mention that once these Pokemon start to battle, they are incredibly brutal, with Charmeleon in particular the more likely Pokemon to get carried away. Charizard isn't much better though, with them being willing to use their incredibly hot flames on their opponents, though they do have a bit of good to them as well, as Charizard will never attack anyone weaker than them. Do we wish Charmeleon and Charizard would mellow out a bit? Yes, but we are placing this evolutionary line here due to Charmander's kind nature, as well as the fact that Charizard is a big ol' softy at heart. Moving on to the Plasma Pokemon, Heat Rotom. To say that this Pokemon loves pranks would be a massive understatement, but while some of the things that it possesses are objects not everyone has, such as the lawnmower, in their heat form, Rotom has taken control of a microwave and would probably be the more common form to come across in any household. Unfortunately, it doesn't use their new heat producing powers to warm up leftovers. Instead, they think it's incredibly funny to use the flames they make to burn clothing and other items. Though while having scorched clothing sucks, this Pokemon isn't actively looking to cause harm, instead thinking their actions are funny. Moving on to the eruption Pokemon, the Camerupt line. Pokemon and people have worked alongside one another for thousands of years. Numel, the first Pokemon in this line, have long lived alongside and helped out people in both moving and carrying loads up to a few hundred pounds. However, Numel is unfortunately not incredibly quick-witted, as a few of their Pokedex entries mention that this Pokemon will not even notice if they're attacked. Once they evolve into Camerupt, though. They become a lot more temperamental. We really can't find any info on camera up to helping people nearly as much as Numel. And as much as we wish the two small volcanoes that are on Camerup's back were dormant, 
That is just not the case, as they will erupt every 10 years, or whenever Camerupt loses their tempers. Tunneling into our next spot, we have the coal Pokemon, Torkoal. Often found deep in caves or anywhere that volcanic activity has happened, Torkoal is usually on the hunt for deposits of coal to eat. But rather than just looking to fill their bellies with the flammable rocks, Torkoal chows down on it because they literally need them to stay alive. It's a common belief in the Pokemon universe where if the fire that burns under Torkoal's shell were to ever go out, they would die. Hence why this Pokemon is constantly on the outlook for coal to eat. Outside of their meal times though, Torkoal seems to be a pretty peaceful Pokemon. From caves and fiery landscapes to more populated areas, next we have the fire evolution, Flareon. This popular evolution might live pretty well with others, and is pretty cool to the touch thanks to the thick fur that helps regulate their body temperature, thanks to the flame sack that Flareon has. Convert any air they inhale into flames over 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. But outside of their fire breathing activities, Flareon does seem to be a pretty well behaved Pokemon, as they do prefer to live with others. We do wish that we could rank Flareon higher in our ranking, but other than them preferring to live in areas where there are others around and their incredibly hot fire, surprisingly not much else is known about Flareon. Next up we have the Infernape line. Next to the Rapidash line, Chimchar, Monferno, and Infernape are some of the fastest fire types in the Pokemon universe, but rather than using their speedy ways to help others out, these Pokemon utilize their quickness to help them fight. Monferno in particular have the skill of being able to latch onto walls and other surfaces to throw their opponents off their guard before attacking. We don't know if Chimchar or Infernape can do that as well, but when Infernape does engage in a Pokemon battle, their movements are said to appear as if they were dancing while they're attacking. We really only know about the fighting techniques of the Infernape line however, and not much else, which is why we're placing the starter line here. Next up we have the Blaze Pokemon, the Blaziken line. Torchic, the first Pokemon in this line, probably has the most positive things going for them, as most of their Pokedex entries mention that this Pokemon is quite cuddly and feels very warm to the touch. With Combusken and Blaziken, however, being cute and cuddly isn't exactly what they're known for. Instead, both are capable of unleashing devastating kicks and being pretty fierce in Pokemon battles. And while the argument can be made that this is just how Combusken and Blaziken fight, some of their Pokedex pages do mention that their attacks leave their opponents scorched and blackened, regardless of who it might be. Next up we have Heatmore. Pokemon need food, no doubt, but Heatmore has a bit of a disturbing dining method. Rather than simply chowing down on their preferred prey of Durant, Heatmore will use the fire they produce to melt Durant's tough body before slurping them up. And while the argument can be made that this is just Heatmore's way of eating, we also feel like this is a pretty harsh hunting method. Next we're heading under Mount Coronet in the Sinnoh region for our next legendary, the Lava Dome Pokemon, Heatran. Like some of the other Pokemon we've talked about so far, Heatran is usually pretty happy when they don't encounter anyone else, preferring an almost hermit-like lifestyle. But when it comes to their home, Heatran is a pretty fierce Pokemon, using the lava they live in to attack anyone they feel threatened by. And if you were hoping Heatran would just stay in their lava pool to attack, guess again since they possess claws that can grip the cave walls in order to climb and attack from above. We do respect Heatran's desire to be left alone and we can't blame this legendary too much for attacking when they feel threatened. But it is Heatran's ferocious attacks and the fact that we really can't find anything else positive about them that drops them into our low gray area. Blasting into our next spot, we have the Fire Turtle Pokemon, Turtonator. If you see this Pokemon out and about, approach with extreme caution. Thanks to the highly volatile chemicals that Turtonator has coating their shells, they are capable of causing large explosions whenever they have anything hit them. Though despite how much danger that Turtonator can cause, they also try to avoid having their shell explode without their intention. They often take refuge in caves in order to avoid others from accidentally touching and detonating the highly sensitive shells. But when Turtonator does decide to cause an explosion, the damage is pretty heavy and unlike Pokemon like Electrode, who faint after going boom, Turtonator can use their explosions for however long they want, without any harm to them. Finally, rounding out our gray area, we have the Lava Pokemon, the Mad Cargo line. Slugma might not be as dangerous as Mad Cargo, as we really don't know how hot they are, but as they are essentially a living magma slug, it's a safe bet to say getting close to one without protective clothing would be a bad idea. But since they aren't the speediest, Slugma's body will start to harden and crust over, making them even more immovable and less likely to cause any damage. Mad Cargo, on the other hand, not only doesn't have any problems with their body 
bodies harden. Sure, they're still a slug, but as their bodies come in at 18,000 degrees, which is nearly double the heat from the surface of the sun, wherever mag cargo goes will be in flames. But keep in mind, slugma and mag cargo aren't actively looking to cause harm. It's just the nature of their bodies, which does keep them out of the next section. With our gray area complete, we now arrive at the fire type Pokemon whose flames will do more than make us toasty, and will leave us with far worse than just mild burns. These fire type Pokemon are the bad and the evil. Swimming up through molten lava to get our top spot in this section, we have the ruinous Pokemon, Chiyu. Along with the other treasures of ruined Pokemon that call the Paldea region home, Chiyu was once an ordinary object, in this case carved beads, that were given life due to them absorbing the malice and envy of others. But while there have been countless battles fought in order to gain possession of both the Beads and Chiyu, this legendary really isn't directly causing that much trouble. That said, they are the embodiment of envy, and that's not a good thing. But if Chiyu is not bothered and left alone, they do seem like relatively peaceful Pokemon. Though for the wars that happen due to them, we are placing Chiyu at the top of this section. Next, we have the toxic lizard Pokemon, the Salazzle line. Where these poisonous lizard Pokemon are concerned, only the female Salandid get enough food in order to get enough energy to evolve. The males, on the other hand, will do whatever the females ask of them, creating a reverse harem of sorts. But we do question how willingly the male Salandid serves the female of the species, since both the female Salandid and Salazzle emit a strong pheromone that helps them control others, and while using others to serve one's own needs is less than ideal or even acceptable behavior, Salazzle doesn't really seem to treat the males of their species all too badly. But what helps in getting the Salazzle line a place in this section is their Scarlet Pokedex entry, which mentions that they will target any male, even if they're outside their evolutionary line, into serving them. Boogieing into our next spot, we have the dancing Pokemon, Bile Style or Ikorio. Often admired for the graceful movements that this Pokemon can make while dancing. Oricorio has gained the fire typing thanks to them drinking the nectar from red flowers in their region. But while they are very passionate about their dance moves, Bile style Oricorio uses their movements to conjure flames to attack their opponents. And yes, all fire types do use their flames while battling. It's the nature of the flames that drop Bile style Oricorio down to this section, as not only will they inflict physical burns, but mental as well. And unlike Alolan Marowak, whose flames can do something similar, Bile Lifestyle Oricorio isn't nearly as peaceful, as even a wrong instruction from their trainer can make them angry enough to attack. Like with other Oricorios though, Bi Lifestyle can change their forms and get a much calmer temperament if they drink a different nectar, so they aren't permanently stuck with this less than ideal attitude. We sure hope our next Pokemon doesn't lose their heads, since we are arriving at the Fireworks Pokemon, Lacephalon. This Ultra Beast might have only appeared in a handful of games so far, but unlike some other Pokemon who have found their way to the Alola region. Thanks to the Ultra Wormholes, Lacephalon is much more of a troublemaker. A favorite tactic of the Fireworks Pokemon is to sneak up on an unsuspecting target before exploding their heads. Rather than looking to simply spook their victims, Lacephalon has a much darker reason for doing this as they wish to steal their target's vitality after the initial shock. Thankfully for whoever Blacephalon targets though, after they're able to calm down again, the window for Blacephalon to carry out their plans is closed. And while we are glad that Blacephalon usually fails with their objective, they are also able to regenerate their heads as well, giving them countless opportunities to try again. Charging into our next spot, we have the Wild Bull Pokemon, Blaze Breed Tauros. Even before adapting to the climate of the Paldea region, Tauros was a pretty hot-blooded Pokemon, with them being known for willingly charging at others and even knocking trees over. But thanks to acquiring the fire typing in Paldea, Blaze Breed Tauros not only still loves to charge at others, but they're now able to heat up their horns before goring anyone unlucky enough to be in their path. Plus, Blaze Breed Tauros really doesn't seem to just charge at those they're battling, or feel threatened by, instead just doing it because they're angry. We now have our final starter line coming up next. From the Johto region, it's time for the Volcano Pokemon, the Typhlosion line. Unlike some of the other evolutionary lines in this section,
protection. Cyndaquil and Quilava are actually fairly decent Pokemon, as both are normally pretty calm except when it comes to battling. Quilava can try and imitate their opponents with their flames on their back, but that is more of a defense technique where they're concerned. But while their Hisuian forms have really mellowed out and are actually a pretty peaceful Pokemon, the same cannot be said for the Typhlosion from the Johto region. Usually in a pretty foul mood, Typhlosion is not only a fierce battler, but they also have a pretty unsettling habit that they'll do if they're angry enough. Even though their fur is fireproof, Typhlosion can rub it together in order to create devastating explosions. And while Typhlosion isn't the first fire-type Pokemon to make stuff go boom, it is said that whatever is caught up in the blast will instantly be reduced to cinders. And yes, this only happens when Typhlosion loses its temper, but for the larger scale of damage that they can cause, as well as potentially harming loads of others in the process, we feel like Typhlosion deserves its ranking. If you encounter our next Pokemon, we can bet that you'll need more than a glass of milk to put out the heat, since we're arriving at the spicy pepper Pokemon, Scovillain. Some of our fire types we have listed so far might be a tad rough or reckless when it comes to their behavior, but after Capsicid is exposed to a fire stone and evolves into Scovillain, the spicy chemical they produce isn't just dangerous to others around them, but also to Scovillain themselves. The two brains of Scovillain have been deeply affected by the spicy chemicals and as such, this Pokemon is very prone to go on a rampage around the Paldea region, with its redhead burning the area with their spicy breath. And unfortunately for anyone who gets in their way, there is really no way of stopping it once they start wrecking stuff. Just barely avoiding our top evil metals, the Scorching Pokemon, the Talonflame line, is up next. Take our advice, if you enter any area that either Fletchender or Talonflame call home, be very careful. Both will not hesitate to attack anyone that they encounter wherever they live, including Pokemon in their own evolutionary line. And if you try to get away, good luck as these bird Pokemon are incredibly fast, which helps greatly when they hunt, as they scatter embers to scare others in order to swoop down and grab them. But it's not just smaller Pokemon that Fletchender and Talonflame target either, since they can carry away prey up to 220 pounds. If it was just the hunting, we wouldn't rank them quite so low, but they'll also send their flames into the homes of their victims and can wipe out the entire household with their attacks. Our bronze medal of evil probably wouldn't be too out of place in a funeral home, since it's going to the luring Pokemon, the Chandelure line. Litwick, Lampent, and Chandelure have long been regarded in the Pokemon universe as harbingers of death, and that belief really isn't without basis as all three of these Pokemon will absorb the life force of others. The flame that sits on top of Litwick is actually of the life force that this Pokemon has stolen, with a more disturbing fact about them being if Litwick's victim is younger, their flame will burn and brighter. Lampant, thankfully, really doesn't seem to prefer preying on those of a younger age, but they will hang around in terminally ill hospital wards, leeching on those who reside there, constantly draining their life away. Chandelure has a fact that actually bypasses Litwick's victim preference, as whatever souls that Chandelure absorbs to keep their flames burning will be forever lost after they're burned up with Chandelure's fire. But despite these three Pokemon having incredibly dark Pokedex pages about them, Chandelure does have just a tiny bit of good going for them, as if they're paired with a trainer they think is worthy, they will be extremely loyal. Unfortunately for the Chandelure line, just being loyal does not cancel out their darker nature, and their evil medal is well deserved. Crawling up into our next spot and earning the Silver Medal of Evil, we have the Radiator Pokemon, the Centiscorch line. Some Pokemon in their earlier stages have had some less than great behaviors, only to mellow out in later evolutions or vice versa, but that's just not the case where Sizzlipede and Centiscorch are concerned. Both of these bug slash fire Pokemon have very vicious tempers, and will lash out and attack anyone and anything that gets close to them. One of the more disturbing facts about Sizzlipede is how they'll wrap their bodies around their prey before heating up in order to cook their prey alive. We're happy to say that while Centiscorch is still pretty vicious, we have no knowledge about their dining habits. If Centiscorch does achieve their Gigantamax forms, however, the heat that radiates can instantly incinerate anyone that is close to Centiscorch and destabilize air currents so much that they can create storms. Finally, far below Armorogue, we have Charcadet's other evolution coming in next, the Fire Blades Pokemon, Cerulege. Just like Charcadet's evolution in Armorogue, if they find a different suit of armor, this time the Malicious Armor, they become
become the fiery sword arm Cerulich. But while Armor Rogue's armor was once worn by a noble warrior, and the Pokemon shows the same qualities, the battle gear that Cerulege has put on has lingering grudges and resentments attached to it, leading them to be pretty heartless in battle. And if cut to pieces by flaming swords wasn't bad enough, Cerulege also uses their attacks in order to steal life force from those they attack, thanks to their signature move, Bitter Blades. With such a cruel nature, and also looking to fuel their own life by draining it away from others, is it really any surprise that Cerulege is receiving our gold medal of evil? And with our morality spectrum complete, let's wrap things up by awarding our Sinner medals. We have to give the Pride medal to the Incineroar line, as they have an incredibly high opinion of themselves and are highly arrogant. The Wrath medal has to go to the Scovillain line, because of how angry they get and the destruction they cause because of it. We're giving the Lust medal to the Salazzle line, since they not only have a group of Pokemon willingly serving the females, but can also attract others thanks to the pheromones they produce. The Envy Award has to go to Chiyu, due to them being essentially the living embodiment of Envy. We're giving the Darwin Award to the Camera Up line, as they rarely notice if they're attacked because they're not very quick-witted. The Sloth Medal has to go to the Mad Cargo line, as they are literally slugs and snails. And finally, we have to give the Gluttony Medal to two entries, who have some pretty disturbing eating habits, those being Heatmore and the Scorch line. 